Hi friend, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to compare postgraduate studies in the UK and in the USA. So in my case, I did a computer science degree in the UK, but I'm going to share with you some comparisons between both the UK and the USA so that you can make an informed decision yourself. Stick till the end so I can share with you my full experience studying a postgraduate degree in the UK, everything unfiltered at the end of this video. First, let's talk about visa acceptance rates. Usually in the UK, as a student, you get two years for postgraduate studies and three years for a PhD. While usually in the USA, you get up to three years of your visa, especially for STEM degrees graduates. Acceptance rates vary massively depending on the countries you're from. So recently in the UK, there's a little bit of a recession from countries like India, Nigeria, but there's a higher acceptance for countries like China. So it really depends on the context. Maybe today there is less acceptance, maybe in some places, but there is more in other places. Same as in the US, so it really depends case by case, but it doesn't stop anyone from applying. If you have a good application, then you have all the chances to get into the UK or the USA. So that really depends on your background, where you come from, your budget and all these things as we're going to see later on the video. In terms of career opportunities, in the UK you switch from a student visa to a graduate visa and then into a skilled worker visa which is the sponsorship by a company. It's quite demanding overall because the company that needs to sponsor you it's like they take charge of all the expenses related to you, the NHS, the medical things, the insurances and all those things. So there is quite a demanding procedure to go through and also a lot of expenses. So it's not as straightforward as people might say, although obviously if you're competent, people will be willing to sponsor you. On the other hand, the H-1B visa in the USA is also as demanding as in the UK. So it's really case per case. But when you already studied there, when you already proved that you're good at what you do, it becomes quite easier to get a job, whether it's in the US or in the UK. But I won't say it's easy or straightforward because you need to stand out. And that's all up to you, your skills, how you network and all the things that I share in the other videos. Next, cost of education. Cost of education in the UK is different from the US. In the US, usually it's more expensive than in the UK. That's because the expenses themselves and the cost of living in the US are higher than the UK. That's in a broader sense, but you have London that kind of stands out as well, which is also expensive. But overall, the UK is a bit cheaper than the USA. I've made a whole video on the cost of education for a postgraduate degree in the UK, which I will link it somewhere in here and you can have a look if you're interested in going to the UK. But overall, the tuition fees vary if you're an international student or a national student. So nationals usually pay less than internationals, on average between 9 to 13,000 pounds a year for a national UK student studying a data science degree postgraduate. And for an international, it goes from 12,000 to 30,000 pounds a year. So quite a jump. Same as in the USA. So internationals pay between 25 to 75 thousand dollars per year, while nationals, depending if it's in the public or the private sector, can go from 10 to 50 thousand dollars a year as well. Always remember that there are more costs associated to studying abroad, whether it's in the UK or the US. There is the cost of living, the cost of food, the cost of entertainment, all these things come into play. And different countries require different budgets for you to even get that visa. So go consult the government's websites, whether it's in the US or in the UK, to get all the information you need in there. If you're enjoying this video so far, remember to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll make sure to cover the topics I get from you on the comment section and on LinkedIn and thank you guys and girls for coming into my LinkedIn and saying hi and asking all the questions. I'm always happy to have a chat with you and help as much as I can. Let's continue. Next, quality of education. So both the US and the UK have very very good qualifications especially in tech but USA always stands out because they have more budgets and they have the biggest universities overall. Even though the UK has some really good universities like Cambridge, some in London as well but in the US overall it's better but it's more expensive as well but you also get a higher pay in the US when you come out from a bigger university. So here it all depends on your vision. If you're aiming for the big companies, Amazon, Tesla, all those things, 
usually degrees from the US help you massively because you even get internships that link you directly with Google, Amazon and all these things when you're in a big university in the US, which doesn't happen very often in the UK, even though you could, but in the US it's more straightforward. But if you wanna have a great career as a data scientist as well, degrees in the UK are really good as well and you can get any job you want if you do things right, if you're serious, if you're network, and if you showcase your project the right way. Next, career opportunities and salaries. And that's a topic most people are interested in. I would say that opportunities are in both the US and the UK. Most companies are shifting into data, into AI, where information age, there are more startups, so people need more and more data specialists. In the US, since it's a bigger country and they're more focused tech than any other country in the world, I'd say there are more opportunities there. But when we say more opportunities, we also say more competition. Same as in the UK. The UK is a huge country. Uh, it's composed of four countries and there are so many opportunities. Yes, the salaries in the US will be higher, but also the cost of living in the US will be higher at the same time. So in the UK, for example, an entry level data scientist will earn between 35 to 45,000 pounds a year, while a mid-level will earn 50 to 70,000 pounds a year on average, and a senior can earn anything above that, 70 to 130, 140,000 pounds a year. While in the USA, an entry level will earn from 90,000 to 120,000, a mid level will earn 130,000 to 160,000, and a senior can earn 200,000 and even more. But remember, the cost of living and the expenses in the US, especially recently, are very high. Even though the salary is high, but the expenses follow as well. Same as in the UK, the UK is not cheap by no means, but the US recently, especially if you're in a big city like New York, the expenses are ridiculously high. In terms of career growth, I would say that I'm in the UK and I see there is a potential of growth that is very high, but from what I hear in the US, it's even higher. If you're that type of person who wants to go through the big companies, gain some massive experience from those like Google or Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever, then you have more chances to achieve that while being in the US or minimum by starting in the US than in the UK. But being in the UK doesn't stop you from achieving those things either. You just need to be a little bit more active, network a bit more and showcase that you really were a shot even though you're not in the US per se. On the other side, if we talk about startups and wanna work for a startup because you like the way they operate, then whether you're in the UK, in the US, or you wanna work for a company in Spain or Germany or in Thailand, that doesn't make any difference. So whether you have a degree here or there, it's completely up to you, your skills, your networking, and whether you get those opportunities or not. And finally, my experience doing a master's degree in the UK. So I came to the UK in 2022. I did a master's degree in computer science in Cardiff. It's the capital of Wales. And my degree cost 15,000 pounds in one year. And then I did some freelancing and I landed the job nine, 10 months after that. So my experience was great because I learned so many fundamentals. I had the chance to apply them. The degree itself was great. I did a lot of work on the side and I didn't go and spend the double of the money in bigger universities just so that I have the prestige. Because nowadays, I really believe that the prestige is good and it can give you opportunities that other universities won't. But even if you go to a normal university that has a good degree and you're sharing content on LinkedIn, have a YouTube channel, do things on the side, you might get even bigger opportunities than those people that were in the most prestigious universities and they were spending like something like $50,000 a year, which I found to be ridiculous and it's too high and you'll end up just paying it back for the next 10 to 15 years, which I don't really recommend, honestly. So my experience is great. I have now a full-time job here in the UK. I don't say that you should do the same as I did because many of you come to me on LinkedIn asking if, if everything's okay in the UK, should I still come to the UK or look for something else? And I don't have an answer for this because I can't tell you to do something or not do something. I'm just sharing my experience here. My experience is great, but believe me when I say that I had to work really hard and I went through all sorts of anxiety and trouble and doubts being by myself and thinking at some point that I wouldn't get a job, even though I was doing more than anyone else. But at some point it paid off because I believed I kept going and I was trying to be different from all the others that were doing all the same things that didn't work. And that's why I created this YouTube channel is to help people like you that wanna move to a country, that wanna do better for themselves, do better for their families, the same as I'm doing right now. 
And if I did it, coming from a country like Morocco, I'm sure you can from wherever you are in the world. Whether you are in Europe, in Canada, in Africa, in Asia, in Australia, wherever, you can do it. Just believe in yourself. Make slow decisions. Watch videos, read articles, do these things because you need to be informed. And then whatever you choose, give it 100%. Don't complain. Complaining doesn't help. Take action. Learn. Be different than others. Leverage social media to showcase your skills and all these things that can benefit you Complaining doesn't help and it will never help and if you're looking to up level your networking skills or your presence on LinkedIn I made a video that goes in detail in how to set up your profile Create content network with people have templates to send to recruiters Everything in one video that I will link somewhere in here for you right now to go and watch and up level your LinkedIn game because that's how I got my first data science job in the UK.